going to talk about the book 1984, but I'm starting by talking about this picture. I took it three months ago in December 2023. It's now March 2024, and my view's not much different. This is, I walked outside, and this is a picture that I've seen outside my bedroom window, actually outside my computer hutch, where I am right now. There's my stuff my view it's an empty field and a dirt road and there's the blinds let's just see there's blinds that's it dirt road field that's it I've got some privacy for a mile. And then there's a tree break. And then there's another field. I live in a small town of Heston, Kansas. I'm retired. And uh, that's what I see. So this morning, I stay up most of the night slept most of the morning. I get up, my wife's watching Ali Velshi on MSNBC. I sit down there talking about George Orwell's 1984. They predict in night, the book was published, it's written in 1948, published 1949. Dystopian future totalitarian nightmare speaker james McAllister discusses its influence the reason they were talking about it is it's one of the most banned books and that is just astonishing to me i did not know that now this uh, McAllister teaches his course he's a political science professor teaches Poli Sci 259 at Williams College, George Orwell, Capitalism, Socialism, and Totalitarianism. It's hard to overstate the enduring influence George Orwell on political discussion in the 20th century and beyond. I guess it's not talked about as much as it used to be. <sighs> Here's my copy on Kindle. I've just moved or I would, I can't find anything to speak of. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. The reason why I'm starting talking about what I see in the field outside my window is because when I speak about any subject, I often feel like I'm just going out there and speaking to the wind as no result. And so it's the same with 1984. I think there's something missing from that. Maybe I should write that novel. I'm a that's New York Times best-selling author. It's that you speak, you may say things that are actually valuable, important, and nobody pays the slightest attention to them in this internet-connected world. This was my uh, high school principal. I started attending high school late 1960s, graduated early 1970s. <coughs> Think about what was going on in that era, 60s, 70s. Think about who was in charge. Guys like this. This was my high school principal. Educated man. Great guy. His generation and most of my teachers, there were some younger teachers, but most of them had lived through the Depression, World War II, 
Korea, and we were all living in the Cold War. So, when I was in high school, We were assigned to read books, and some books they assigned us to read, you know, to come back to class and talk about them in class. <clears throat> 1984, we read in class. We read it in class. They didn't want to take a chance that we wouldn't learn what was in this book. It wasn't banned. It was required reading. Now, I don't know if Every student in my high school was required to read it. I was aware that some students couldn't read, basically. Uh, an eternal problem. We were seated in some classes alphabetically, and the student that sat next to me couldn't read. So they just... Uh, I'm talking about the English teacher. <coughs> gave him paper and crayons. He was just passed along year after year. Don't have any rose-colored look at the past about everything. There's a bell curve to everything. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Book novel 1984. You know, there's some, uh, sometimes they have lists of best books, best novels. Now, 1984 would probably not make a whole lot of people's best book, but if there was a list of important books, it should be on the list. If you haven't read it, you should. It will provide a context. Um, it certainly did for me. <laughs> no problem if you question government and question what's on the news outlets they don't like it but uh, even if there's some good reporters well, people that own the business they make the decisions <laughs>